The newest demon, this schemer, can be a game changer when it comes to playing a survivor. Although most tactics apply to all demons across the board, some changes to Ball's kit can force survivors to make different choices in order to ensure survival. Here are my 16 tips to succeed with survivors when going against the schemer. I won't be covering general tips about the survivors on this video as I have already made a video on my favorite tips for survivors and also mistakes to avoid. I'll be putting the link in the description and also here on the top right right corner of the screen. This video will be covering mostly tips for survivors when going against the schemer, so a little more specific to counter Bow's abilities and units. So first, let's cover general tactics. Don't walk on a straight line if the demon is around you. The schemer has the unique ability to set up scare traps anywhere, so when running from point to point and you hear the demon is around you, it's likely he will try and set up scare traps for you to walk into. Keep the demon guessing where you're going by zigzagging so that you can avoid the scare traps and avoid getting marked. Against the schemer, hunters who normally like to go solo should probably avoid this tactic. Hunters are extremely squeegee, and if they get marked, Embrace the Darkness can hit hunters for 800 damage. This can mean death if no teammates are around you and the boss gets spawned. With the number of cards reduced in the map in the latest patch, it has never been more dangerous to go solo as a hunter. Stay close to your leader more than ever. Leaders lower your fear dramatically and having one in your team has become the meta. It's okay to split up if you guys are coordinating your moves and keeping comms open. But if you are solo queuing, then you might want to stay close to your leader or whoever else might complement your character. Warriors could stay with healers and hunters with leaders, for instance. The schemer's active ability, Scarefest, can arm and rearm traps on cooldown, which will keep popping units out into survivors who keep walking over them. If you see that happening, move away from the spot and regroup. It means Scarefest is on. Now let's talk about team composition and what's the current meta. With Bow's marking mechanics, survivors are constantly getting marked which increases the damage they receive by up to 50% if they are being attacked by other possessed survivors. It's become crucial more than ever to have a team composition which has some form of damage reduction. Brock is a great pick as he will reduce the incoming damage to any other survivor who is part of the Williams family. So best picks at the moment in the team with Brock are going to be any of the Ash and also Cheryl. Having two leaders in your team can also be strong as that will ensure your fear levels are low most of the time and if your team stays together, you'll be a lot more resistant to possessions. Another strong possibility is having David in your team. Whenever David drinks a Shemps, any survivors around him will receive a damage reduction bonus. That plus the fear reduction from Beacon of Hope in a team with a fear reducing leader is a strong composition and a great counter to ball. Now let's talk about the demon's units and how you should deal with them. The schemer's basic units have fit of temper, which means if they activate the ability, their head will glow red and their attack speed hugely increases, being able to hit you with a devastating combo. Demons tend to activate this ability as soon as there is a possession, so try and dodge towards the basic unit. That will make the demon scramble for a second as they've lost you and give you enough time to decide what's your next move. You can use the environment to your advantage, vaulting through ledges and going around simple obstacles like trees or rocks. In most most cases dodging and then walking backwards works well. This probably goes to most basic units from most demons, but Bow's ones are particularly dangerous with fits of temper. The schemer's elites are tanky and can hit really hard. The best way to deal with them is, you guess, avoiding them. You will have to find them at some point however, so since their attacks are slow, you can dodge them easily if you're a leader or a hunter. As a warrior, use your two dodges in between attacks to avoid the elite's attacks, and once you're out of stamina, Stamina, walk backwards or use the environment until your stamina replenishes. You shouldn't try to tank the elite's attacks, as each heavy attack can drain your health by 600 damage. Unless you're Warrior Ash with your active ability on, maybe with Brock nearby, or you've got Henry with his active ability, avoid going head to head against the elites. Cascade of Blood has a surprisingly large area of effect. If you're going against the elites, it's likely that is going to come out at some point. Ensure you're dodging as explained and then walk Walk away from the elites if you see them curling into a ball. That's Cascade of Blood coming. If you are walking around them, you will get hit and you can hit for over 600 damage, so be careful. The other AoE attack from the elite, Cruel Needles, is easier to dodge. It hits on a T-shape, one in front and one on each side of the unit, and the elite's hand will glow red when it's about to use it, so pay attention to it and get ready to dodge. The boss is weak against the group, but individually it can overwhelm survivors. It's got a big hitbox when using its heavy attacks, so even if you're 
standing next to him rather than in front, you risk being hit. Best to run away from him at first sight and use similar tactics as if you were facing his other units. When you see Bo moving his hands to do one of his AoE attacks, get ready. Like the Elite's Cascade of Blood, they have a large area of effect as well. Once his hand goes up, hit dodge to avoid being hit. According to some, Blood Harvest can hit survivors for up to 1300 damage, so stay away as much as you can. When the boss is on you and he goes invisible, keep attacking. Even invisible ball can still be hit and if he's weak already, you might be able to dispatch him. However, watch out for peekaboo. The first hit ball does after becoming invisible can heal you for 300 damage plus. If you're a hunter low on damage, that might be all the demon needs to down you. And these are all of my tips to survivors when going specifically against the schemer. Like I said, there are loads more tips in my previous videos which will apply to all demons. So make sure you watch those to improve your chances of surviving. If you watched it until now, drop a like, subscribe, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.